The defending Super Bowl champion New England Patriots have already wrapped up the number two seed in the AFC. But head coach Bill Belichick told the team he wants them playing well in January, not in the playoffs, in January. And January begins today as they wrap up the regular season hosting the San Francisco 49ers in week 17 of the NFL on Fox. Hello again, everyone. I'm Kurt Menefee, joined as always by my partner, Tim Green. And Tim, you look at the Patriots. They're locked into that number two. Can't go any higher, can't go any lower. So the big question for them globally, if you will, is how long will they play their starters today? I love when you think globally. <laughs> now, I, you know, I think that that this is a team that's a championship team because of the discipline that, that Bill Belichick instills. And they practiced all week the way they always practice. And they prepared the way they always prepare. And, you know, we're going to see the starters. We'll see Tom Brady in there. But we also know from Bill Belichick that we will see Rowan Davey. At, at some point in time, Bill Belichick wants to give his backup players some experience. So we'll see Corey Dillon at running back, and then we'll see some Cedric Cobbs. So I think that the, the key to how much we see the starters and how much we see the backups is going to be how well the Patriots do. Because as you mentioned, Belichick wants that momentum going into, uh, into the playoffs. Meanwhile, for the San Francisco 49ers, they're struggling just to finish the season. A lot of injuries all over on both sides of the football, and they are 2-13. and 13. But even on a 2-13 and 13 team, there are bright spots. Well, and I think that, that Bill Belichick looks at the opportunity to get his, his backup some experience against some players who are certainly viable. I mean, Eric Johnson with 79 catches, you know, one of the top tight ends in the league. And then for the 49ers defensively, you know, you've got guys like Bryant Young who just continues to play hard and a true professional. And then in the middle of that defense also, Jeff Albrick at linebacker and Derek Smith. For the Patriots backups who play against these guys, it is going to be very real. And a very happy new year to all of you from all of us here at Fox Sports. And of course, the New England Patriot fans have had many a happy day here at this stadium. Many a happy day the last couple of years. They've got 18 consecutive victories during the regular season here at Gillette Stadium. 22 and 3 since the stadium opened for that 18 game win streak, the longest going at home in the NFL. You can talk about streaks when you got guys like Tom Brady at quarterback and a lot of the other weapons they have. It's easy to put streaks together like that. San Francisco has won the toss. Adam Vinatieri kicks it off. Final week of the regular season. Maurice Hicks begins it at the nine yard line. Hicks brought down right across the 25. And that's where Ken Dorsey will begin. Number seven, making his seventh start in the National Football League, the seventh round draft pick in 2003 from the University of Miami. Of course, Ken Dorsey had tremendous success at the University of Miami, but you know, he's an inexperienced guy. He's got a, a decent arm and a quick release, but he's young and he's made the mistakes that young quarterbacks make. Turnovers. He's also, also been struggling with injured fingers on both hands. Hands it off to Kevin Barlow. Barlow not going to get far. Maybe a yard on that play. Well, the 49ers, their struggles have been well documented off to a 2-13 and 13 season so far and trying to avoid the worst record in franchise history in a 16-game campaign, which would be 2-14. and 14. Eric Johnson has had a big season so far. Steve Bush also getting the start at fullback. Flex, 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 flex. 49ers go with the empty backfield on second down. Dorsey's first pass bobbled and dropped. Intended for the tight end, Eric Johnson. Well, the New England Patriots defense comes in with a couple of changes, some because of injury, like Jarvis Green, who gets to start at defensive end in place of the injured Richard Seymour and some because of coaches decisions as well. They've got the normal four in the linebacking crew and then the secondary is where we see more changes. Randall Gay back in at cornerback but Don Davis the linebacker gets his second start at free safety in place of Eugene Wilson. Here's Dorsey on third down. Steps up completes it out to Eric Johnson good enough for a first down. Rodney Harrison knocked him out of bounds but only after he picked up 10. And even though it is a 49ers first down, Rodney Harrison doing what he does best, really just setting a tone. If you're going to catch the football in the in the 
New England secondary, you're going to pay for it. I, I, I like Kurt that he told us he never helped guys up, and then we caught him on film helping somebody up. And I what did we notice also? <laughs> that was the Monday night before the Pro Bowl vote. That's right. In Miami. Here's Kevin Barlow. Bounces it outside, and he gets wrapped up right on the end by Jarvis Green. Kevin Barlow certainly, uh, you know, had the big contract in the offseason. They made him their feature running back. They let Garrison Hurst go. And uh, he's been a big disappointment this season. And if today the 49ers are going to have success against this Patriot defense, Kevin Barlow is going to have to have a big day. Had his best game of the season last week. And a run game takes pressure off the young quarterback. On second down, here's Barlow again. Runs it right up the middle and gets stuffed. Right of the line of scrimmage by Big Keith Trailer. Part of the reason why Barlow probably won't, you know, isn't likely to have a great day today is this defense. And, and I think the thing about this defense, Kurt, it's the 3 4 defense and those four linebackers, all those guys have a lot of experience and they rarely make a mental mistake. It's the fourth ranked rush defense in the National Football League. They have been hard to run against for everyone. Niners need the 47 for the first down. Dorsey throws on the run, broken up by Asante Samuel, intended for Curtis Conway. Patriots defense without their two starting cornerbacks, Ty Law and Tyrone Poole. So Asante Samuel, you see, gets actually gets beat off the line, but the ball just a little bit underthrown. He makes a nice play on it. So on comes Andy Lee, one of the busier punters in the National Football League. Second in the league with 91 punts through the first 15 games. Bethel Johnson back. Dangerous is Johnson. He's got the punter to beat, and he does that. There's a penalty marker down on the field as Johnson goes into the end zone. The flags all the way back in Patriot territory. One of the things Bill Belichick was so happy about with the Patriots game last week against the Jets was that they played well in all three phases of the game offense, the defense, return, and special teams. Illegal block in the back. 29 of the return team. Half the distance to the goal. First down. And so that one will be coming back. So a frustrating start for New England who thought they had the points. Instead, they just have the ball. While the block in the back called against the Patriots, back them up, backs them up to the seven-yard line. And this is where they'll begin. Yeah, Earthwind Moreland's block on Keith Lewis right there. Probably without the block. It wouldn't have, they wouldn't have had the return. First down for the Patriots, Corey Dillon. Dillon will pick up just about two yards on that run as the 49er defense had it sniffed out as Tom Brady. The question is, as we said earlier, how long will he play? He's got a couple of milestones he can reach. Only two touchdown passes away from his career high of 28 on the season. Quick pass. That's caught by Dion Branch, and Branch is going to be out near that first down marker. Well, this Patriot offense, we talked about the defense and how highly ranked it is. The Patriots offense come in, comes in as one of only three teams in all the National Football League, ranked in the top ten in both offense and defense. The offense is number eight overall. They, Denver, and the Philadelphia Eagles are the only three teams in the top ten on both sides of the football. Patriots going with the no huddle. Looks a little, it's kind of a sluggish no huddle though, Kurt. Here's Brady. Over the middle, caught by the tight end Christian Fourier, who is starting the game today in place of the injured Daniel Graham. Just a, a perfectly executed pass. Brady has, gets a nice pocket from his offensive line. 
And then Fourier just breaks right between the two coverage, behind the linebacker and in front of the safety, Parrish. Ball thrown perfectly. Picks up the first down. Ball at the 36. Corey Dillon. Cuts it back, and Dillon out to the 43-yard line. Well, this 49er defense has been banged up throughout most of the year, and lots of unfamiliar names and unfamiliar faces there. You see Cooper and Andrew Williams now in the starting lineup at the defensive line. Salim Rashid replaces Jamie Winborn at linebacker. And in the secondary, Jimmy Williams and Shante Spencer back there. They lost Mike Rumpf earlier in the season. And then Ahmed Plummer, their top two cornerbacks, have been gone for the entire second half of the year. Brady on second down. Steps into it, completes it out to Deion Branch, and that'll be another Patriot first down right at midfield. This is a game, you know, that Brady was excited to play because he talked about it this week in the fact that he grew up in San Mateo, a big 49er fan. His parents had season tickets, always went to games, and was frustrated because the 49ers didn't draft him when he had an opportunity coming out of Michigan lasting till the sixth round. Well, he was frustrated that everyone passed up on him until the sixth round, but he used that opportunity of being a third-string quarterback to build himself up physically and mentally. Nice run after the catch, but Corey Dillon lost the football, and the 49ers look like they have recovered. You know, everyone's asked today, the question was not whether the Patriots would win or not, but by how much. And the one thing that has undone the Patriots in their two losses this season, turnovers, Kurt. Four turnovers against Miami, four turnovers against Pittsburgh. They've got one already today. After the turnover, 49ers start at their own 29-yard line. Corey Dillon coughing it up. Fourth time this year, he's lost a fumble. Dorsey scrambling. Throws that one away. There's a flag down as well. Holding, 77, offense. 10-yard penalty. Feel first down. Quame Harris, the left tackle, the victim there. Well, Kurt, we talked at the beginning about the effort from these 49ers players, especially on defense. Watch the path of John Engelberger that takes him all the way to Corey Dillon. He's rushing the passer there and pursues this thing all the way downfield, misses the tackle, comes back, and then strips the ball. So when you talk about players in a, in a meaningless game, in a, in a morbid season, John Engelberger still putting out maximum effort. Burt Brown comes in at cornerback. They hand it off instead. And there's another flag down after the run by Barlow. Holding, 69. Offense, half a distance to the goal. Still first down. Well, that's on the right guard, Kyle Kozar. Kurt, you mentioned the struggles of their offensive yeah. line, and and certainly a lot of people look at the the Ron Stone and Derek Deese, who were veteran guys at the end of their career, who were let go by the 49ers. Don't forget Sarah, Senator Jeremy Newberry's been out all year too. Newberry's been out because of an injury, and certainly that veteran cohesion is is part of the reason why this line has struggled. This drive started on the 29. They're now inside their own 10. And the flags fly before the ball is even snapped this time. Man, it's just embarrassing, to be honest with you. Right? It is. Here's the call. Three from penalties Coleman in a again. row. Yeah. Prior to the snap, ball start, 81, offense. Five-yard yep. penalty, still first down. So the number one draft pick, Rashawn Woods, who has had a horrible year, only eight catches all season long, and now comes into the game and gets a penalty right away. Uh, and I think part of the reason why the 49ers are 2-13 and 13 to begin with is because of a lack of discipline all season long. And nothing exemplifies that more than three penalties in a row after a big turnover. Now inside their five. Barlow. Brought down by Willie McGinnis to the eight-yard line. Not often you see a team lose 24 yards right after getting a turnover. 
No, it's it it's awful. You know, part of the reason why you know we talked about the 49ers with their lack of, of veterans, especially on the line. I mean, and we talked about the linebackers for the Patriots, and, and I think the veteran experience, you know, Willie McGinnis and, and Bruski and Johnson and Rabel, those guys and their experience has such great cohesion, and it just keeps this defense so solid. Maurice Hicks won't get far, brought down at the 15-yard line. Let's head out to Los Angeles for our first game break of the day. Take it away, JB. All right, Craig, Washington capitalized on a 66-yard kickoff return when Patrick Ramsey hooks up with Chris Cooley for the score. 7-0 Washington gives has never lost to the Vikings. He's 7-0. Meanwhile, Carolina on top 3-0. We know a Vikings loss. Carolina wins, helps Carolina in the playoffs. Back to Kurt and Tim. All right, JB, we'll keep you updated on the playoff picture as the day goes on in both the NFC and the AFC. Maurice Hicks gets away, but not for long. Can't get out to the first down marker as Earthwind Moreland brings him down for the tackle. Kurt, we saw Vikings behind in that game against Washington. Now, if they win, they clinch a playoff berth. But they could still get into the playoffs, even if they lose, as long as Carolina loses or loses or ties, or St. Louis loses or ties. Yeah. So Minnesota, it's simple. They win, yeah. they're in. But they can if back not, in. They can still get in. And and unlike Jimmy Johnson, I, I think that the Jets are going to beat the St. Louis Rams today, and and the Vikings will be in that way, even if they lose. Here's Andy Lee's punt. Bethel Johnson, no flags down on this one, and Johnson is brought down just shy of the 35 yard line so Tom Brady and company will get their second chance at it with just over six minutes left in the first quarter. Well the NFL playoffs begin next weekend and next Sunday you can catch a wild card game at four o'clock Eastern one Pacific right here on Fox. Obviously the matchups yet to be determined but that game will be followed by a two-hour season premiere of 24. And we know Kiefer Boy. Sutherland will be there for that one. Two hours out of the 24 already in the premiere, right, Kurt? Rory Dillon gets through the hole. I think he's pumped up about the whole 24 thing, yeah, you think? Only leaves 22 hours yeah, exactly. left. Well, hey, I'm got... pumped up about the wild card. All right, let's talk football. The pretty colors? Is yeah, that what you're oh, excited about? I love about? it all, man. And, and, you know, of course, the Green Bay Packers will end up playing whoever the the, the the worst wild card record holder is and then it might be Seattle or it conceivably could be the Rams over here playing the remainder you know those are the four teams and you can call Howie Long's cell phone they said on the pregame show if you wonder what different combinations can get you into that wild card <laughs> spot yeah, give out the number while you're at it why don't you oh but if David you Gibbons it. with the catch on the sideline being here in uh, New England. Or I'm sure how he will call powers. you if you just put your number out. You don't have to call him. Individual service being done by Fox. First down picked up by the Patriots. Ball now at the 47-yard line. First possession. They move the ball down the field, and then Dillon fumbled on the run after the catch. So second possession of the ball game. Brady has time. Through the hands of Dillon and intercepted by Carpenter. Dwayne Carpenter all the way back inside the 25 yard line. Oh, this is a sloppy, sloppy start for the Patriots. Two possessions, two turnovers. Yeah, the, the pass was a little high, but it was it was mishandled. Tipped by Corey Dillon. And good coverage downfield by the 49ers secondary. Tom Brady dropping back and he goes to Dillon as his check down. You can see clearly looking around the field and then goes to Dillon as a check down and passes a little bit high, but still one that Corey Dillon should catch. First down at the 22. Here's Kevin Barlow. Picks up about three yards on the play. And the interception by Carpenter giving the 49ers great field position. What a story this guy is. Played in not only the Arena Football League, AFL 2 for the Rochester team. Worked at a Burger King so he could make enough money. And he was on a team, they got paid 50 bucks when you won the game. So that was just three years ago. Has worked his way into the National Football League and contributing for the 49ers. 
much did you get when you lost? <laughs> Free burgers from his stock at Burger King, probably. Curtis Conway picks up the first down at the 10. Randall Gay forced him out of bounds. Randall Gay, one of those backup cornerbacks for the Patriots. And Curtis Conway, an experienced vet. Conway just makes a break to the outside. Lots of separation, a very clear target for the young quarterback, Ken Dorsey. And Dorsey said he felt like he could take chances throwing the ball, but only to the outside of this Patriots defense. He did not want to let that thing fly down the middle where Rodney Harrison hangs out. Here's Barlow. He'll pick up three yards on the run. And speaking of Rodney yeah, Harrison, there exactly. he was. Right you know? away. And we saw the shot that he gave to Eric Johnson, the 49ers tight end earlier, and this time he gives out a little bit to Barlow. And I'll tell you what, I, this guy, Harrison, was absolutely slighted in the Pro Bowl. I mean, there is no way, in my opinion, that he should not have been selected as a safety for the AFC Pro Bowl team. Who do you take off? Uh, John Lynch. They fake it on second down. The tight end, Aaron Walker, makes the catch. Nowhere to run afterwards as Teddy Bruschi and company are there to wrap him up. Teddy Bruschi, I mean, if it was up to his mom, man, I love that story. <laughs> I thought I was talking to him before the game, and I know people, a lot of people in New England especially know about it, but to hear him tell, he's like, yeah, my mom wasn't going to let me play. She wanted me in the band. She wouldn't buy me cleats. Well, he played the saxophone and the clarinet. Yeah. Still does. <laughs> Not he a had, lot of money in rock and roll in the clarinet, though. He had to play in sneakers for the first three days. I said, hey, man, when I was in Pop Warner, I had to play my first season in sneakers. My parents didn't think I was going to be a football player. Third and goal, Dorsey dumps it off. Out of the backfield, Steve Bush, and that's a touchdown, 49ers. And so San Francisco takes advantage of the turnover, and Dwayne Carpenter's interception ends up in points. Well, they said after the first Patriots turnover that that has been their undoing this season. The two times they've lost, four turnovers, two already, and they're behind in this one. Todd Peterson with the extra point. And he gets it through. And so the San Francisco 49ers on the road at the Patriots and ahead 7-0. Boston, 49ers lead at 7-0 here in New England. And you know, Bill Belichick told his team, I want you playing well in January, not waiting till the playoffs. January is already here. He can't be pleased with the start he's seen so far. Well, th some things have been going well. I mean, Brady's been accurate. They've been able to run the ball, but it's just the major gaffes and the turnovers and the block in the back on the on the punt return. Baffle Johnson's brought down at the 30-yard line. The Patriots will give it another shot as Brady comes back out for possession number three. It's really good. Well, for the first time in 21 games, the Patriots find themselves playing from behind initially. They had scored first in 20 consecutive games, longest streak in the National Football League, before the turnovers bit them today. They've turned it over twice, had a touchdown on a punt return, called back. And so you can look at it and say it's been a horrible start for them, but despite all that, they're still down just 7-0. Out of the backfield, Patrick Pass. Pass will pick up about eight yards on the play before being stopped by Salim Rashid. Penalty See, marker down as well. Another screen play by the Patriots, and they're, they're probably the best screen Holding team in the NFL. 63, offense. 10-yard penalty, still first down. Penalty backs him up, Joe Andrusi, the left guard. And I think the reason why they are the best screen team in the National Football League is the blocking they get from their from these guys downfield. The offensive linemen do a great job of giving the running back blocks downfield. You rarely see a Patriots offensive lineman miss on a block downfield on a screen. But it won't count. It's backed up after the penalty inside the 20. 
from the shotgun. Brady gets it out to pass again. This time, Patrick Pass is brought down by Jimmy Williams and Jeff Elbert. Kirk, Patriots playing behind because of these oopses. There's the block in the back on the punt return that went for a touchdown. There's Engelberger forcing the fumble from Corey Dillon. And here's the bad pass by Brady, the bad handle by Dillon, and then the interception that set up the 49ers touchdown. Here's Brady again, looking up top. Intended for David Gibbons, he was covered like a blanket to pull an old cliche out. Jimmy Williams right there with him. Yeah, Brady had to let this pass go sooner than he wanted. One of the uh, 49er players we talked about right at the beginning of this game was Bryant Young. And if you watch him right here, this is a guy who's been in this thing 12 years and he continues to play all out, even in a game like this. So a lack of timing on that caused really by the pass rush of Bryant Young. And good coverage in the secondary as well. As the Patriots need the 40. Brady flushed out, dumps it off to Patrick Pass, penalty marker down as he is brought down. Well, Tony Brown did a good job of reading that screen. And he actually slipped in behind the They'll Patriots blockers. Prior to the pass, 67 offense. That penalty's declined, fourth down. Dan Cope in the center going down too early, but it won't matter because they stopped him far short of the first down thanks to the effort by Brian. Oh, well, and again, we talk about, you know, sloppy play and, and uh, things that are not characteristic of this Patriots team and getting downfield. I mean, they do that screen so many times that it's unusual for a lineman not to hold it in the line of scrimmage until the pass is thrown. Here's Josh Miller on to punt. Miller standing back at his 18-yard line. Cedric Wilson will watch that one roll out of bounds. All coming this February, NASCAR on Fox returns with the biggest event in all of racing, the Daytona 500, with Grand Marshal Ashton Kutcher. Oh, boy, you better be ready for that one. The world's best drivers go bumper to bumper, kicking off 15 weeks of NASCAR coverage. It's the 47th running of the Daytona 500, February 20th, in high definition only on Fox. And, Kurt, I know you know that that's the one everyone calls the great American race. Oh, I thought you were talking about Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> what do you know about Ashton Kutcher? I, He's I on that 70s anything. show. I don't know anything, man. I'm like, who the heck is Ashton Kutcher? Is he, have they gone that far down into the roster? Well, he, <laughs> he's going to be driving the number seven car. Guy? I don't know. Maybe you'll have to be more there with him. You never know. It's about all I know of the kid. Here's Ken Dorsey. Kevin Barlow out of the backfield. Gets away from Willie McGinnis. There's a flag down, and that may be a face mask on McGinnis. As Barlow was getting away, he was grabbing, trying to catch on to anything he could. There's a call from Walt Coleman. Personal foul, grasping the face mask, 55, defense. 15 yard penalty, first down. That's exactly what it is on McGinnis. Well, one thing I can promise you, as a guy who's played on some teams, I, I was never on a two and 13 team, but I was on some three and 13 teams. And if you get into a situation like this where the 49ers are playing the world champions, the reigning world champions, last game of the season in a miserable season, and all of a sudden things start to go your way. Then guys start to get energized and excited. Balls across midfield. Kevin Barlow. Stacked up at the line of scrimmage, but keeps on fighting to pick up two. You know, one thing that, that is just not working at all for the 49ers is this run game. The Patriots just absolutely shutting it down. And most of the time, the Patriots will can shut the run game down just with their front seven. They, Rodney Harrison is active in defending the run, and he will come up and be the eighth man. But those three down linemen with those four linebackers typically can stop the opponent's run game with just seven. Dorsey changing the play at the line of scrimmage. You saw Rodney Harrison come in and then back off. Barlow, best run of the day for him as he gets down near that 40-yard line on what looks to be the final play of the first quarter. 
Well, the Patriots turned the ball over twice, had a punt return for a touchdown called back on a penalty, and have had penalties on both sides of the ball, yet it's still only a 7-0 game as we head to the second quarter. You almost don't want to talk too loudly here. It's like a golf tournament. <laughs> it's it's, it's a little quiet. Not a lot of life here as we get ready to start the second quarter. This Patriot hometown crowd a little bit maybe stunned at the malaise their team has come out of. Malaise is the perfect word. I mean, the, the, the Patriots just looking out of sync, making big mistakes. It just looks like they just gave up a, a first down there in, in, the, in the running game. It's which close, is, yeah, but you know, it's one thing for them to make the mistakes. San Francisco now getting an opportunity maybe to take advantage of it for the second straight time. They scored the one touchdown, really following up the interception by Dwayne Carpenter. And I think it's just, you know, it's a human nature thing, right? I mean, all week long, all the players, all the coaches said, you know, we're preparing the same, we're doing it the same. We're, you know, we don't know how long the starters are going to play. We're going to prepare like it's a normal game. You know, we want to have the momentum going into the playoffs, but, you know, unless they get themselves back on track here, they're not going to have any kind of momentum because these are the Patriots starters out here against the 49ers starters, and right now the 49ers are, are winning this game. Yeah, and Kevin Barlow won that matchup, picked up the first down on fourth and one. And so right now the 49ers just taking it right at him. And, and as I said a moment ago, Everything that goes right for the 49ers in this situation and everything that goes wrong for the Patriots just continues to build the excitement and the enthusiasm of a, of a team that has had a just a pathetic season. Because if you can go out with a win against the defending world champions, you know, it, it takes a little bit of the stink away from the season. Barlow out of the backfield, picks up just a couple of yards on the play. Roosevelt Colvin in there to make the stop and there's Barlow and Harrison having a friendly conversation two guys that not necessarily known for keeping their feelings to themselves <laughs> no huh? I, I tell you what I if, if I were if I were Kevin Barlow I'd just be I wouldn't say anything especially to that guy no, yeah. I wouldn't say anything because I he doesn't need much encouragement to come flying in there and take your head off I think the thing is, you know, with the Patriots in the malaise they've been in, you don't you don't want to get them excited. Don't give them a reason. Here's Barlow right up the middle. Gets about a yard, maybe a yard and a half on the play. We need to check in with JB for another game break. Here's Minnesota had a first and goal series and it got it down to third and goal here. Take a look. Call Pepper incomplete attempt here. Minnesota had to settle for a Morton Anderson 23 yard field goal. Trailing Washington now 7-3. Right now the Jets on top of the Rams 3-0. Back to Kurt and 10. Well, thanks, JB. Well, at least they let Culpepper throw the pass, right? Kurt, they had a running off. I still think Minnesota's going to win that game and make the playoffs. That's got a feel. Dorsey threads it in there to Curtis Conway. Conway picks up the first down inside the 20. And we saw Conway going at the, the Patriots cornerbacks on the other side now he's going after Samuel on this side and again it's an out cut that's where Ken Dorsey wants to make his throws to the outside of this defense so this is a, a nice route and a well-thrown pass and Dorsey as I said he feels safe throwing to the outside away from the safeties and the linebackers underneath where the interceptions lurk there's Maurice Hicks Picks up a couple of yards on first down. Well, this has been a good start for Dorsey. We talked about the struggles he's had this year coming into the game with nearly twice as many interceptions as touchdowns. And already in this game, he's off to a 7 of 9 start with a touchdown. And I, those kind of mistakes have surprised the 49ers coaches because Dorsey's a smart guy. He's, and he's a guy who is extremely dedicated to learning the game plan, to knowing everything Grapes on it, paper. Grapes it, Grapes. So they feel that the mistakes he's made have been uncharacteristic of them. Tenth lay of the drive. Whoa, Maurice Hicks still up, but took a hit right after catching that ball. Teddy Bruschi right there to lay the wood down. Yeah, who, who Rodney you, Harrison yeah, was yeah, the first guy yeah, to yeah, pop him, yeah. and then Bruschi wrapped it up. And that's the thing about a Rodney Harrison hit, right? And, and Hicks almost recovered, but man, that's a lot of power coming at him. It just just knocked him back so far that actually Rodney Harrison was able to recover himself 
And he would have had that tackle, Kurt, whether Bruschi came in on it or not. Third down for the Niners. They need the nine. Dorsey scrambles. Throws towards the end zone and out of bounds. Incomplete. Willie McGinnis was chasing him from behind. That was a good play by Dorsey, right? I mean, just, you know, he's a guy who struggled throwing interceptions with turnovers. He knows he's a young quarterback, and he got in trouble, and he used his legs just to get him out of it and then throw the ball away, and now they've got a chance at a field goal. Todd Peterson, who's been perfect inside 45 yards so far this season, will try one from 39 yards away. It's up, and he missed it. First time all year he's missed inside 45. He struggled with the hard ball and the cold weather during pregame, and it seems to have followed it here into the contest. Drive along the Charles River, Kurt, inside Boston. In a car. That's right. Rather than a uh, rowboat. A good or a skull. A good town to be a sports fan, right? It really is. Obviously, the Patriots winning two of their last three, or the two of the last three Super Bowls, is Brady going deep. Broken up, Shante Spencer, the rookie, knocks it away, intended for David Patton. Shante Spencer, a second-round pick out of Pittsburgh, and he's a guy who has benefited from this 49ers season. The fact that they didn't have their starters, he's a rookie probably would, that wouldn't have had as much playing time, but you can see here he's got some nice speed, and, and he finished that play extremely well. Looked up, got his hand on the ball, and knocked it down. Good player, nice kid, right? Said he can't wait to get home. Uh, have mom's and, home and cooking get, in Pittsburgh. Get mom's cooking, sleep in his, his bedroom that he slept in growing up, and that was how he's going to celebrate uh, the end of this season. Corey Dillon spins out to the 40-yard line. That's good enough for a first down. Let's check in again with JB for another game break. Hey, Kurt, as you well know, the Saints need a victory and some help in order to get into the postseason. Deuce McAllister, 70-yard one run, 70-yard run set up that Aaron Stecker seven-yard touchdown run. Saints on top, Carolina 7-3. Back to Kurt and Tim. The Saints were at four and eight and looked like they were absolutely dead. And since then, all they've done is reel off three straight wins, and with a win today and some help, they can be in the playoffs. Brady out to Fourier. Fourier near another first down. He picks it up on a gain of 10 and a half. The Patriots starting to heat up. And if you look at the New Orleans playoff situation, they must win today against the Panthers. And they need either the Rams to lose or the Seahawks and the Vikings both to win. So they need a couple things to happen besides winning themselves. I hope everyone's writing all this down. Or just call how he wants. <laughs> just inside the 50. Brady's changing it. And you hear how quiet it is and the ability for him to make that adjustment. Corey Dillon. Whatever the adjustment was, it was the right one as Dillon picks up 20 yards. I think one thing that Tom Brady does when he checks off on plays, he makes the defense think that he's checking to a pass because he'll actually point downfield and talk about who's going to pick up whom on, on the pass protection. And then they go ahead and run the draw. And that's exactly what happened on that. I think the 49ers heard him talking, heard him directing the blocking scheme, and they were thinking pass. Dylan gets five more. You see Dylan really getting a, getting a roll here. And he has certainly, Kurt, been the best part about the 49ers, or the 49ers, best part about the Patriots, the best improvement in the Patriots season, their run game from last year to this year has been pretty, uh, pretty extraordinary. Well, he came into this game needing 81 yards to get to 1,600 on the year. Their leading rusher, Antoine Smith, last year had 642, so nearly 1,000 more, 900 more at this stage. Of course, last week he broke Curtis Martin's single season rushing record for the Patriots. Brady. Completes it. David Gibbons gets away, and Gibbons fights all the way down to the two-yard line. 
Now it's as if the Patriots kind of woke up. Kurt. The alarm clock went right? off. I mean, they, <laughs> they came out, maybe they hit the snooze button, and they came out snoozy and lethargic, and all of a sudden, especially, I mean, everything here offensively is working. Mike Vrabel, the linebacker, checks in. And when you talk about that run game, running in the red zone has been very good for the Patriots this season. Flag down already. It's be early movement for New England. Ball start, 50, offense. Five-yard penalty, field first down. And it is on Vrabel, who just checked in. And that, that'll that'll get you checked out <laughs> quick, you know what I mean? You're, yeah. you're a defensive player, and you get... You get to get in there. And we saw in practice on Friday, they, they, Vrabel was in there on the red zone, and they actually threw him a pass. They threw a fade route. I remember he caught corner. that one in the Super Bowl last yeah, year, and too. He, and he caught it in practice and then came in here. They probably were going to throw that fade route to him, but he went offside. Box him up to the seven. Dylan. Slides down back to the two-yard line. And that's that running game. And you really want to be able to run in the red zone. Pass coverage is easier for defenses because all your defensive backs don't have to worry about getting beat deep. There is no deep. You've got the back of the end zone there. So the coverage always gets tighter. The passing game gets more difficult. And the teams that can run down here are the ones who have the most success. So Vrabel checks back in. What do you think? So does Russ throw, Hochstein. Throw the fade route to Vrabel. What do you think? They've got Russ Hochstein call the lineman as a fullback right now. He there blocks. it is. There it is. There's Vrabel for the touchdown. <laughs> right? They get it going. I wonder what he said to Bill Belichick on the sideline to let him get him put back in. I'll make up for it, coach. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. He just has to has to fake fake the block, and there he does. He fakes the block down. Sells Ronnie Hurd on the fact that he's blocking and then just sneaks out and a little, little fade to the corner. So you do learn things by watching Friday's <laughs> practice. <laughs> Every now and then. <laughs> Finitary on for the extra point. And so the Patriots, despite their struggles at the beginning, Pull out old Mike Grable, a play they've run often and had a lot of success. They get it again. Mike Vrabel's second catch of the year, his second touchdown. Well, thank you. I think he's thanking Bill Belichick, don't you? That's what yeah. you do. When you're a linebacker, and I, I played some linebacker, you thank the head coach when he lets you catch a touchdown pass. I called it a fade. I don't I think it's kind of, you know, that's a sexier term than just an out cut or a flat route, right? For a linebacker, that's a fade. Well, it's amazing. Teams haven't figured that out yet. They weren't at practice on Friday. Well, despite this sluggish start we talked about with New England, turnovers, penalties, all that, with under six minutes left in the first half, it's still just a 7-7 ball game. So New England appeared to wake up on that last possession. We'll see how their defense does as San Francisco, who took advantage of the turnovers early on, begins with the ball at the 28-yard line. Maurice Hicks picks up about two yards on the play. Don Davis, the free safety who wears number 51 in there on the tackle. And when you do this Patriot team, you don't pay attention to numbers, really, because they've right. got 80s at corner and 50s at safety. and. 50s at tight end too. Well, Troy Brown though, he's the he's the real wild card, right? He's, you saw that on Terry the Terry Awards, right? They've got him all over the place. Kevin Barlow runs right into Ty Warren, maybe a yard on the play. I think when you when you see someone like Davis playing safety and he's a linebacker or Troy Brown playing cornerback and he's a receiver it's not as if Bill Belichick just plugged those guys in you know at, at, on the last second I mean those those are contingencies that Belichick planned for all, all the way back in preseason of course Troy Brown played a lot 
a cornerback in the preseason. People worried about, well, he might get hurt. And that experience in the defense has obviously paid off. The same thing with Davis. I mean, he, he prepared to play that position. Incomplete. Eric Johnson, the intended receiver, and that'll be three and out for the 49ers. Troy Brown plays, and he was in on that last play, and when he comes in, he plays in the slot position, and that's what he plays as a receiver. And I thought it was interesting talking to Rodney Harrison. He said, you know, I, I told Troy last week when he was playing against Wayne Corbett, you know, Troy was worried about how am I going to cover him, what is he going to do? He said, Troy, you're you. Corbett is you. That's like you. How would, how would you have someone cover you, you know? Physical guy off the line of scrimmage, and and uh, it worked for him. He did pretty well against Corbett. And now Brown's back on the punt return. Bethel Johnson's the deep man. And he makes a fair catch. So Troy Brown all over the place, on offense, on defense, and on special teams. And his team right now ready to turn it over to Tom Brady. Patriots and 49ers all even at seven late in the second quarter. Tom Brady, other than that bad throw that led to an interception and eventually led to San Francisco's points, doing a good job so far against a team he grew up rooting for. He's out of the shotgun here. Up top, overthrown and incomplete. That pass intended for his tight end, Jed Weaver, the former 49er. Well, that wasn't in rhythm, but on the last drive, this Patriots offense was in total rhythm. Corey Dillon running right through the middle of the 49ers. Tom Brady, precision passing. And then this kind of a, you know, a bit of a trick play. Out cut by Vrabel, the linebacker. After the incompletion, second down, Brady from the shotgun. Steps up, throws, and this time completes it to Weaver, who falls forward, will be near that first down marker. Let's check in with JB for another game break. Kurt, I know you know it all too well. Rams need a victory and some help in order to get to the postseason. Mark Mulder hooking up with Isaac Bruce, post corner route successful against the Jets. They're on top in the second by the score of 7-3. to three. Back to Kurt and Tim. But Jimmy Johnson was right. So far. So far, yeah. I should, it's still early I in the should, contest. Yeah, that's, that's, that's way for me. Jets can make the playoffs if they win that ball game. Patriots did pick up the first down. Ball's at the 34. Here's Brady again. Kind of hopping as he threw that one as he's being pressured by John Engelberger. Yeah, nice pressure. They came with the blitz and got right on Brady. Now, we saw the Rams, and if they're going to go into the playoffs, all they need to do is, is win today and then have a Vikings loss, loss or a Panthers and Saints tie. But so what I happens would... if the Jets win? Well, then they didn't lose. I mean, they've, no, they, I mean, they, they, the they lose. What happens for the Jets? <laughs> the Jets are in if they win. The Jets are in if they win. Yeah. Have to look at both the AFC and NFC picture. Brady. Underneath, Patrick Pass. Pass brought down right at the 40-yard line. Derek Smith and Jeff Obrick with the tackle. So it'll be third and about four yards for New England. And they go without a huddle. Brady steps up to the line of scrimmage. We'll call the play from there. Looking like Peyton Manning. 35 by 20. That's complete. Weaver, first down, Patriots. 17 yards on the play. Second first down by Weaver. And Patriots have had excellent production from their tight ends all season. Dan Graham, Fourier, and now Weaver. And Weaver's just so physical, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That doesn't have the fluidity of those other two guys, but man, when he catches it and gets going. You can see Brady going without the huddle again, calling the play at the line of scrimmage. They've been doing that on this drive. Been a variety. They started out the game with a little mini sugar huddle, if you will, and now going without a huddle completely as Brady completes that one out to David Patton. 
Huddle or none, it seems as though this offense has gotten it together. That's 23 yards. Well, two weeks ago, Tom Brady threw four picks and lost to Miami. And then last week against the Jets, he was making these kinds of throws. And, you know, Kurt, we watched it on film, and you just had to marvel at the accuracy of the downfield passing by Tom Brady. And he throws it author with authority, but the accuracy is, uh, I, I think he's a guy who has gotten better each season. From the 19. That's a pass. Juggling probably would have been better off that he not caught yeah. that football. Yep, too much of a juggle. And that let the defense catch up. And I talked about Brady getting better. And earlier in the game, I talked about how when he came here as a sixth round pick, you know, Mike Weissick, the strength coach for the Patriots, said, you know, when Brady was the third quarterback, he was. You know, skinny guy and he spent a lot of time in the weight room and has actually put on 20 to 25 pounds so he's added size and strength and i think that's helped his throwing two minute warning here in new england patriots driving at the 25. two minute warning 49ers and patriots all even at seven tom brady 15 of 20 158 yards so far in this ball game and as he looks to continue his winning ways, at least today. Yeah, over McMahon and Danny White. Gosh, remember Danny White when he'd come in for Roger Staubach? And One of the more underrated quarterbacks, games. I think. But Brady's won 47 of his 61 starts as a Patriot. Well, those, those are some nice names to be on top of, though, huh? Good category. Working from the shotgun is Brady on second down. Ball knocked out of his hand by Engelberger. And it looks like the 49ers recover. Third turnover of the ball game by New England. And the second one, courtesy of John Engelberger. Engelberger rushing from the outside, and he actually breaks back to the inside. He takes an inside pass rush because they're coming with the blitz on the outside. Races around and does that classic swat at the ball. So a fumble and an interception by Brady so far. A fumble by Corey Dillon. And right now, San Francisco has the ball on the 30-yard line. All three timeouts left on a minute 51 in the first half. Here's Dorsey stepping up but can't get away from Willie McGinnis. Flagged down as well. Holding, 78, offense. That penalty's declined. Second down. That's on Scott Gregg, the right tackle. They'll take the sack instead. And I've talked about these Patriots linebackers, Kurt, all game long and their experience and what they do and what they can do. And Banta Kane comes from the outside. McGinnis comes from the outside. They send the defensive lineman up the middle, so it's really kind of a five-man blitz with those linebackers getting involved. Maurice Hicks has nowhere to go as Jarvis Green wraps him up. Right about the 25-yard line. Don't forget, coming up on the Visa Halftime Report, JB, Terry, Howie, and Jimmy. With all the scores and highlights from around the National Football League, our Fox Sports ticker will get you updated with up-to-the-second stats. And, of course, they'll get you all set as to the playoff picture in both the NFC and AFC and exactly what's going on and what it all means. That's the Visa Halftime Report. Coming up in just over a minute and a half from now on the game clock. And there you see up in the corner there on the Fox box, you saw the Jets just a moment ago. Up now 10-7 over St. Louis. There it is. Does that mean Jimmy's wrong again? <laughs> right, he's wrong. But that was funny when Howie said three million people just ran to place a bet against what Jimmy predicted. He's been so bad with his predictions. It's like me. 49ers need the 30. Out of the backfield, hits with blockers, gets it. Teddy Bruschi wraps him up, but not until he got to the 40-yard line and another San Francisco first down. Well, we talked about Ken Dorsey and being young and making mistakes under pressure. Usually a quarterback makes mistakes when he's under pressure. 
This time, Dorsey does have pressure on him. See Banta Kane coming in, but he still gets the ball off, gets it off well. 49ers still have their three timeouts. Dorsey going deep. Now that's going to be comes offensive out. pass yeah, interference. Cedric Wilson was the intended receiver. Randall Gay was down there, and that ball kind of hung up in the air. Wilson, to avoid the interception, pushed it. I, I don't think I don't think Randall Pass Gay could have caught that ball. 84 offense, 10 yard penalty, first down. You know this is this is not a a well thrown pass, but Cedric Wilson probably should have just kept running and then made the you know what I'm saying made the play on the ball to the outside but that's easy for me to say I'm sure Cedric Jr. is going to have uh, <laughs> have something to say about it too right we talked about his nine-year-old son Cedric Jr. who gives him advice and watches game film with him every week and says dad why don't you catch more touchdown pass <laughs> then, then you'd win there's Kevin Barlow dancing and the music is stopped Tully Banta Kane the former Cal product. And you just see the, the, the Patriots defense just rallying, swarming to the football. I mean, he actually made Rodney Harrison miss with that move, but it slowed him down enough and just the relentless pursuit. See Will for it coming down the line of scrimmage and Bruski and Banta Kane. And the 49ers just letting the clock run yep. despite the fact it's only second down. Kind of surprising. They took that one shot, got the pass interference penalty, and after that, decided to uh, fold up the tent and go to halftime, basically. So they get a couple of early turnovers, take advantage of one of them for a 7-0 lead. New England has come back despite the three turnovers by the Patriots in the first half. It's a 7-7 game at halftime. Visa Halftime Report coming up next. What's he asking him about turnovers? Just about ready for the start of the third quarter here at Foxborough for the San Francisco 49ers and New England Patriots all even at seven apiece. Kurt Menefee along with Tim Green and Tim. Well, before the game, people wondered how a two and 13 team would respond yeah. on the road against a team that was 13 yeah. and two and headed towards the playoffs. And so far, it's been kind of a shaky performance for the 13 and two New England Patriots. Yeah, I mean, the Patriots came out uh, pretty lethargic and uh, the 49ers have, have, you know, kept up their enthusiasm. Patriots clearly a better team, but uh, you know the turnovers has been the story. And John Engelberger right there with that strip of Corey Dillon, that was one. And then Engelberger, this is, this is an interception by Dwayne Carpenter. That was the second. And then Engelberger again, sacking and stripping Tom Brady. And so the 49ers have kept themselves in this game. And you know we talked talked all game long, Kurt, about the the thing that has undone the Patriots this season has been the turnovers. Otherwise, you know, they're winning them all. Here's a look at the first half stats, and you see really the key in this ball game so far, the three turnovers by New England on offense. Yeah, and if you look at New England's, you know, 209 yards of total offense, that's pretty doggone good. And, and you know, Tom Brady, but for that interception, has thrown the ball extremely well. So I would expect, you know, the Patriots to stay on track. And, uh, you know, I don't think the, the starters are going to come out until they have this game in hand. Here's a look at the fantasy numbers from this game. Keep in mind that for all the latest fantasy stats, all you have to do is log on to FoxSports.com on MSN or NFL.com on AOL or anywhere you want to plug in via the World Wide Web. Well, it'll be interesting to see how long Tom Brady and company plays here in the second half. Well, remember, Kurt, I mean, I said right from the beginning of this game that the starters expected to play into the third quarter, and they didn't expect to come out in, unless they were clearly winning this game. Right now, they're not clearly winning. Patriots will receive the start of the second half. Todd Peterson's kickoff taken by Bethel Johnson at the nine. Johnson 
out across the 35-yard line, and that's where the Patriots will begin. During halftime, Butch Stearns had a chance to speak with the 49er head coach. All right, thanks, guys. Dennis, uh, turnovers have been a problem for your team all year long. It hasn't been in your favor, but you created three of them here in the first half. Disappointed you don't have the lead at halftime? Yeah, we missed a field goal, but uh, we've got to get some big plays. We're trying to saw wood in the running game, keep them off the field, but we've got to get some big plays on offense in a passing game. That last drive with timeouts left, why not try score there? Well, because we got sacked, first of all, we tried to, and then so we, we had bad field position. I didn't want to give them the ball. All right, good luck in a second. All right. right. Thanks a lot. Flag down already on the very first play from scrimmage as Corey Dillon was grabbed. Personal foul. Grasp in the face mask. 50 defense. 15 yard penalty. First down. That's on Derek Smith, the linebacker, and so it will begin. Very good field position for New England. Kurt, I've talked about the importance of turnovers and the importance of not having them for the Patriots and actually if you go back over the last two years in all four of their losses they had at least four turnovers of course we talked about the four they had against Miami and the four they had against Pittsburgh this season and they're up to three today but they've got the ball at the 47 yard line of San Francisco here early in the second half Corey Dillon stretched out Got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Jeff Ulbrich knocked him out of bounds. I thought it was interesting that Dennis Erickson said, you know, we want to keep sawing wood and by running the ball. And uh, they haven't had a lot of success running the ball, but they have been able to have uh, to win the time of possession, right? I mean, they, they've had the ball 16 minutes and change to the Patriots 13 minutes and change. So from that standpoint, they are keeping the ball, at least in the first half, they kept it out of Tom Brady's hands. Here's Dillon on the delayed draw. And Dillon gets out to the 40-yard line of the 49ers. Six yards on that play. Well, what you have seen here, really, from both these teams, you take away the turnovers, which you can't, but New England has done what New England does. They've mixed it up on offense. They've played strong on defense. And San Francisco has done what the 49ers do, really. They played kind of conservatively on offense at times, even their lateness second in the first half, in the second quarter when they had all three timeouts and decided not to drive the field. Here's Brady going for Gibbons, overthrew him. Just let him too much. But Gibbons clearly had Jimmy Williams beat. And Ronnie Hurd at the safety position was, was too far over. And this easily could have been a touchdown or at least a, a big play. And instead, it's a punting situation as Josh Miller will come on. Tries to pooch it down inside the 20. It's inside the 5 and downed. Did they get it? Yes. Yes, they did. Right at the one foot line. Gerard Cherry had been cut by the team earlier this season, re-signed this week, and paying dividends right away. The 49ers have about 99 yards and two feet to go. Well, this is where on defense, Kurt, you're thinking safety. Barlow. Stacked up, falls forward, and picks up about a yard. As a defender, anytime you can score any points, you're you know you unless get, you're Mike Vrabel. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's right. You know, you start you, you start frothing at the mouth, and uh, when you have a when you have an offense like this pinned that far down defensively, I guarantee in that Patriots defensive auto, they're saying, hey, let, you know, let's get some points in. Now, Vrabel got the touchdown. He's thinking about more. Barlow again gets through the hole and gets him a little bit of breathing room out to the six. And that's really what you need. You know, you need the breathing room so that Ken Dorsey can can drop back without having to worry about getting sacked in the end zone and giving up that safety. Fourth and 
49ers have to get it to the 11-yard line to keep the drive alive. Dorsey throws Cedric Wilson his first catch of the ball game, and it's good enough for a 49er first down. And again, Kurt, any downfield passing, we're seeing the success coming on these outcuts. Cedric Wilson working on Randall Gay. Nice move, breaks to the outside. That's a well-thrown pass by Dorsey. I mean, there, there's not a lot of room for error. Gay really wasn't that far off of Cedric Wilson, but... Dorsey threw a nice pass. Dorsey may be playing his best game so far. No, 10 of 14. No, no doubt. Rolling. Throws that one in the ground incomplete. And, oh, and it's make, been plays like that that make it a good game. Forget the incompletion, wise decision. Yeah, you're right. I mean, he's, he he kept them alive on, on third down, threw it away. They missed the field goal. But, you know, the thing about it is, Kurt, he's, he's keeping them in the game. He's making good decisions because they're tied, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, when, when you looked at uh, their game last week against the Buffalo Bills, they got behind early. And then Dorsey had a tremendous amount of pressure on him. He was in a known passing situation. And because they've, they've kept it close and because they've run the ball a little bit, even though they haven't run it with tremendous success, it's taken pressure off of Ken Dorsey. Kevin Barlow. With second effort, got it back to the line of scrimmage and nothing more. The rookie, Vince Wolfork, on the tackle. And Wolfork is, uh, boy, he, he's he's a rookie in, in name only, right? Yeah. I mean, he's just a, a huge man, tremendous strength. And uh, Bill Belichick said, you know, this guy just came in ready to play, just at a maturity level, not only physically, but just mentally. And he was a pleasure to talk to, wasn't he, on Friday? Yeah, exactly. 23-year-old man out of the University of Miami. Family man, he said. I'm a family man. No, I, I love two it. kids. Dorsey backpedaling. That ball still alive. And it falls incomplete. Boy, he was hit as he was throwing that one by Teddy Bruschi. And lucky that wasn't picked off. So a punting situation for the 49ers. Zandy Lee will be forced to kick out of his end zone. Just at the goal line. Fourth punt of the afternoon, but got plenty of room this time. Gets it off. Bethel Johnson from the 43. Brought down right about the 49-yard line. 43 yards on the punt, six on the return. In February, the biggest event in television returns to Fox with a full day of coverage, beginning with a star-studded pregame spectacular. Then the game's best teams meet the crown of champions. Super Bowl 39, February 6th in high definition, only on Fox. And my goodness, that's just I, I, over a month from right now. As we're in the 2005 already. Brady and the Patriots trying to get back there, starting at their own 49. Hands it off to Corey Dillon. Changes directions. Dillon with a stiff arm. Oh, man. Winds up picking up seven yards wow. on the run. Oh, this is an addition that the Patriots did not have the last couple of years when the Super Bowl... Featured them two of the last three times, going down to the final seconds. Of course, in Super Bowl 36, it was against the Rams. Adam Vinatieri won it with a field goal in the last second, 20 to 17. And then again last year, against the Carolina Panthers, once again, it was Vinatieri. Right at the end to win it by a field goal. And Corey Dillon still charging. Down inside the 15-yard line, and with the addition of Dillon, yeah. if the Patriots get to the Super Bowl, it may not be that close. And I, he is I a difference maker. They, I, I agree with you, and Jimmy Johnson was saying the same thing in the halftime show that Corey Dillon really has been a huge addition to this Patriots team. And we know they've won two out of the last three Super Bowls, and certainly his presence and his success in the run game and what he's added to this team gives them a very good chance, if not the most likely chance, of 
returning to the Super Bowl and winning it again. Dylan checks out with 102 yards right now. That's caught Christian Fourier and picks up a couple of yards. And that's an important number for Corey Dillon with the run. He's now over the 1600 yard mark, which allows him to reach the final incentive in an incentive laden contract. Picks up about 375 grand for going over the 1600 yard mark. First time in his career he's ever done that. First time the Patriots have ever had a runner go over 1500 yards, and he just keeps extending not only his personal best, but a franchise record. And the money. put money in his pocket. Put some money. Nothing wrong with money that combination. All, money all over the field. Quick pass. Deion Brent. Oh, what hands. Still alive all the way into the end zone for the wow. touchdown. Wow. I think a lot of times these Patriots receivers get overlooked because the ball is spread around between the three of them, but Deion Branch is a guy who has hands and he has speed, and those two things make him dangerous. He used them both on that, didn't he, Kurt? That, the hands were tremendous. And what about the move to celebrate the afterwards? Moves, yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that as Adam Vinatieri comes on. Gets the extra points. And the Patriots take the lead for the first time today. You see Teddy Bruschi giving him a hard time about his dance moves. Hey, he may not be in Soul Train, but he's in the end zone. It's the Patriot version of the Big Man Dance Challenge. Dion Branch in the end zone, and then Teddy Bruschi on the sideline. <laughs> Bruschi had a little of that shake. He had maybe he? more he rhythm. Good, man. He, he did. Cedric Wilson. Oh, he was, remember, he was in the marching band, you know? The musical insight coming in handy. Now, let's just take a look at the touchdown. And watch the detail here. And you see the move forward to freeze the secondary so that, the, so that David Patton can make the block. It's just a stutter step forward. And that sets up the block. And then the catch and the run. And then the moves. Cedric Wilson returned that punt or a kickoff pardon me and he's limping off leading receiver for the 49ers is now out of action he checks out and the rookie Rashawn Wood comes in Maurice Hicks and Hicks will pick up a couple of yards on the play well, well Kurt we looked at Teddy Bruschi's dance uh, fashion but I'll tell you what I, I, don't, I don't know about fashion when it comes to haircuts there he is when he was. There it is. How about that? That's the high school band picture. That's the. The mullet was going, man. Yeah, he's got that. That's that's some serious mullet right there. So he may be able to dance. Well, he's having a heck of a day. He's dancing on the sideline. He's got 11 tackles already in this contest. He'll go home and pull out the clarinet and celebrate. Dorsey looking for Woods. Threw it behind him and it's incomplete. Uh, he needed to throw that behind him because. Samuel had excellent coverage. Asante Samuel just got stayed over the top of Rashawn Woods, used his body, kept him back, and and uh, it was a smart decision by Dorsey to underthrow it. Rashawn Woods, of course, the 49ers first round draft pick who also hasn't had him. No, he's, he's had opportunities, but not a lot of production this season for him. Niners need the 45. Dorsey throws it out. Woods can't one hand that one. It's incomplete. And the disappointing rookie season continues. Only eight catches from the number one draft pick. And here's a guy who absolutely lit it up at Oklahoma State, yeah. setting all kinds of NCAA records for touchdowns and receptions. Well, these are the kind of catches he made, too, Kurt. I mean, he comes across, and, you know, that's that might have been on the more difficult side, but very catchable. Of course, maybe Rodney Harrison might add something to do with it. Maybe you heard those footsteps coming. Andy Lee's punt high. Bethel Johnson calls for the fair catch. Dropped the football, but fell on top of it right at the 24. So the Patriots holding on to the lead for the first time this afternoon. Still up seven. 
Patriots up by a touchdown halfway through the third quarter, and Tom Brady still in at quarterback for New England. The question was, how long would he and many of the other starters play? And so far, they're still in there. That's underneath Patrick Pass. He'll fall forward out to the 31-yard line. Well, Bill Belichick told us that he wanted this game. He wanted to win this game. And I predicted at the beginning that he would want to have this game clearly in hand before he pulled the starters. And that, I guess 14 to 7, he doesn't consider clearly in hand. Well, we haven't seen Corey Dillon back in since he had the big run that put him over the 100 yard right. mark. He may be done, but not all the starters. As Patrick Pass gets that carry and picks up a first down. I would expect that if they score on this drive here, then that will be the last of Brady for today. Going without a huddle again. They did make one change at left guard. Russ Hochstein in the ball game in place of Joe Andrusi, but so far, uh, Andrusi and Dylan, the only starters not in the lineup right now. And they're going with three wide receivers. Brady. Going deep. Pass almost picked off. Shante Spencer who was there on the coverage against Bevel Johnson. Well, Bethel Johnson was running, and Spencer was running right there with him step for step. Well, the passing game didn't work on that one. The running game is Corey Dillon's out now after going over 100 yards. As Curtin, we talked about what an addition he's been to this team. And you see they went from 28th in the NFL to 8th in rush yards per game with the addition of Corey Dillon. And outstanding season he's had and remember he missed one game this year he's got over 1600 yards in 15 games Bethel Johnson goes up and comes down immediately right into the arms of Spencer but I think that you talk about the difference maker that Corey Dillon has been and, and you look at the numbers and you see he came in as the fourth ranked rusher in the National Football League but once again what's impressive is he's played hurt he's been banged up with a, a thigh and an ankle most of the year yet has missed only one contest and given you productivity they need to cross the 49 Brady throws over the middle and that one is incomplete. Tony Parrish diving in, trying to pick it off, but couldn't grab it before he hit the ground as he overthrew David Gibbons. So Josh Miller will come on to punt for the New England Patriots. P.J. Fleck in his first NFL game back to take the punt. We saw Cedric Wilson limp off earlier. He's got an injured left angle, ankle. His return is doubtful, and so Fleck, who was activated off the practice squad just this weekend, catches it on the run. Welcome to the NFL. He was hit big time there. But he returns it out to about the 32-yard line, and that's where they'll begin when we come back. Can you hear me now? No, I Can you see me now? Huh? I'm thinking that, that she's calling for the playoff picture, right? Calling Howie Long? Isn't that what everybody's doing? That's what they he, say. His Call. wife, Diane, might not be happy if no. she's calling him. No, <laughs> she's calling about the playoff picture, Kurt. Dorsey gets it out to Curtis Conway. Conway wrapped up. Asante Samuel was the first to get him. Rodney Harrison caught him from behind as he got banged around. And when you talk about the playoff picture, Here's what it looks like. Jets controlling their own destiny, right? They've got a win today against the St. Louis Rams. Broncos need a win. Buffalo. Buffalo, I think, the hottest team in the AFC. I, th I think that that's a team that people aren't going to want to see get into the playoffs. Here's Kevin Barlow. Through a hole. Barlow into the open field. They're being chased down in Patriot territory by Randall Gay but only after he picked up 20. And 
it's almost as if the Patriots are wondering why the 49ers aren't just laying, laying over. down, you know, and let's let's yeah. stop this nonsense. You know, we're we're going to the playoffs and you're not. We'll just cut it out. They haven't so far. Ball's at the 32-yard line. Marlowe again. Caught. 12th tackle for Teddy Bruschi. And he is just all over, isn't he? All over the field. A lot of fun to watch. Active, just all energy. There he comes. You know, Ted Johnson is a guy who takes things on traditionally, right? He's a guy who'll stuff a guard or stuff a fullback in the hole, and Bruschi's guy just zips and zaps around and makes guys miss and then makes the tackle. Lost a yard on the play. Two different styles, you know, both of them yeah. inside backers there, side by side, but Maurice Hicks lost the football, and Tully Banta Kane fell on it. No one knocked that one out. Hicks just ran into traffic and lost the grip on the ball. Uh, I would I would contend that Vince Wilfork is the guy that caused this because he drives the center, Gutierrez, right back. Watch Wilfork right there. I mean, 75. Look at him. I mean, he drives Gutierrez right back in to Hicks. You know, we talked about Wilfork's maturity and, and his strength and his power, and he just sent Gutierrez backwards. Nice, you know. First turnover of the day by San Francisco. See, Will, you know, you see Will Frick and Ty Warren, they know. Well, they're trying to take credit for oh, it. Oh, absolutely. Brady working from the shotgun. Up high and complete to Troy Brown. Let's complete one out to Los Angeles and JB for the game break. Hey, Kurt and Tim, the Rams had just scored to make it 21-10 on this ensuing kickoff. Take a look at the Jets. Jericho Cotchery, he takes the kickoff return 94 yards of pay dirt. We know that a Jets victory and they're in. They have narrowed the gap to the Rams. 21-17, 5.30 left in third. Back to Kurt and Tim. All right, as you basically put it, the winner of that game will be in the playoffs since they each control their own destiny. Bethel Johnson gets the first down grab out near midfield. Well, the Rams actually do need a little bit of help. They need to beat the Jets and then have the either the Vikings lose or the Panthers and the Saints tie. So. Ball's on the 49 for New England. Brady caught Jed Weaver down to the 25-yard line. A pickup of 26. Weaver's third catch of the day. All of them have been for first downs. Plenty of time for Brady. Weaver a big target in the middle of the field. First down for the Patriots. They hand it off to Patrick Pass. John Engelberger chased it back inside, but Patrick Pass still picked up five. You gotta think that if the Patriots are able to put up any points here, this might be the last time we see Brady during the regular season. Right now, San Francisco trying to keep him off the board. His pass gets wrapped up by Big Bryant Young. That's one thing this 49ers team has done defensively. It just played tough all season long in, in spite of the fact that they've continued to lose, continued to have struggles on offense which wears you down physically and more importantly as a defense when your offense can't do anything it wears you down mentally but Bryant Young just the consummate professional just continues to play hard pass spins up 
will pick up a couple of yards on the play. Jeff Ulbrich in there on the tackle. So here it is, fourth down time. Crowd wanting sure. the Patriots to go for it. Why not? They have been so good, the Patriots, in these third and short, fourth and short situations all season long. Brady on the quarterback sneak. Good again. Yep. They gave a passing formation. Brady goes with the quick goose count. It's where you just goose a center and ball comes up and you catch everyone off guard. End of the third quarter. Final quarter of the regular season coming up as the Patriots holding on to the lead 14 to 7. Now the crowd going into a standing ovation right here as Tom Brady is now out of the game. Rowan Davey comes in to replace him. Just the second time this year that Davey has seen action. And he'll take the ball over with really good field position here, huh? 15-yard line. And a first down. Corey Dillon checks back in. He gets the run. Dillon down inside the 10. Finally strung out and forced out by Shante Spencer. Well, if people didn't believe that the players didn't know when they were going to come off, Tom Brady was still on the field when Rowan Davey got the tap to come in. And Brady says, all right. Get some out now. Well, the crowd actually chanting Corey now as they have found a new love affair with their first year running back, and Davey takes over. Well, we've seen the numbers today, and the graphics have shown what they've done with Corey Dillon, their run game, that adds just so much to an offense. Dillon cuts it back into huh. the end zone. Touchdown, Patriots. That's pretty good, right? I mean, the crowd's calling your name. They want you to, they want you to get it, and then you get it and you score. Yeah! Corey Dillon will most likely cap off a great first year with the Patriots, more than 1,600 yards, and now 12. Rushing touchdowns. Adam Vinatieri puts up the extra point. Dylan and com company comfortably in front. They scored 21 straight and lead it 21-7. Corey Dillon gets his 12th touchdown. Adds to the stats and adds to the lead. New England on top 21 to 7 right now. Early on here in the fourth quarter is Maurice Hicks takes the kick off the five yard line. Some hitting going on around there as he comes back out to the 30. And you know, right now, I think that Bill Belichick probably feels a lot better about his team after halftime than he did in the first half. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, they started out sluggish, but, uh, you know, they, they got into a rhythm, and now it's like, you know, everything is as it should be, right? I mean, uh, the Patriots, one of the best teams in the, in the league, clearly on top of the 49ers, one of the worst teams in the league, and now Bill Belichick can take a look at some of his backup players. We'll probably start mixing guys in here and there throughout. Dorsey. A pass caught. Curtis Conway with the reception. Now, I thought it was interesting when we when we talked about uh, the Patriots all week and we were talking about the veterans that they have and, and how much the, the veterans have added. And they, of course, they, they brought in Corey Dillon, who was also a veteran. And then when we talked to Dennis Erickson about the 49ers situation, he said, you know, we just we just don't have enough veterans, you know. And in the offseason, they want to bring in some veteran free agent players. Kevin Barlow, one of those veterans who hasn't really performed up to snuff this year, is brought down by Jarvis Green. And the question is, will Dennis Erickson be there? 
when they bring in veterans next season? Well, it, you know, sources that I have inside the team say that that is 99.9% that he will not be there. And he will have a meeting with owner Dr. John York sometime in the next couple of days. And there's also been some suggestion that Terry Donahue, the general manager, is also likely to uh, part ways. But you never Kevin know. Barlow comes through. He was stopped in the backfield, continued the effort, and Troy Brown was the one who had to chase him down inside the 30. Gain of 33 on the play. Barlow is yet to get up. And we saw Barlow do this same run this same way against the Buffalo Bills last week. And remember when we talked to Dennis Erickson, we talked about Dennis and him not possibly not being around. He wished Barlow had run like this for the first 14 games. Oh, Kevin Barlow still down on the field. He was holding his head earlier. Oh, Kevin Barlow walked over to the sideline on his own. He checks out. Maurice Hicks checks in. Nice run he had. 33 yards on that run. Puts the ball at the 28-yard line. Maurice Hicks. Hicks. Keeps on fighting. We'll pick up about five yards on the play. Well, Kurt, when you think of NFL dynasties, you have to think of the Steelers in the 70s, right? Four Super Bowls. Of course, our Terry Bradshaw was there. And then I think of the 49ers, unfortunately. That was my era. They won a couple of those. And then Troy Aikman, Cowboys, three Super Bowls. How about the Patriots? They win this one, right? That'll be three out of four years. That constitutes a dynasty, doesn't it? Well, this will be a tough road. There's movement there early on. On that left side of the 49er offensive line. Prior to snap, ball start, 77, offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. The left tackle, Quaim Harris. So if the Patriots become a dynasty, what's the connection between the Patriots dynasty and the Cowboys dynasty? Can you tell me? Um... Let me see. Good question. The strength coach. Oh, is that what it is? Yes, the strength coach. What's Mike Wysick. Do you know him? There he is. Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. How Five you... Super Bowl rings. How do you know him? Uh, he used to be the strength coach at Syracuse. Oh, there you go. The but Orangeman it's... connection. Yeah, but I'll tell I you what. It was in there it's, somewhere. You know what? It's not just me. If you ask Troy Aikman, Daryl Johnston, Jimmy Johnson, right, Michael Irvin, those guys, to a man, they rave about this guy and the contribution that he made to that Cowboys dynasty. And I understand that Sally Tallulah made the uniforms for all teams that have won the last 10 Super Bowls, too. So we should probably get her name in there. Come on. And make sure she gets Are it. Are you that? I mean, really? Do you, oh, do you no, not believe that, you a hard that time. the strength and conditioning of a team isn't uh, tremendously important? Dorsey going up for Sean Woods. Can't grab it. Incomplete. Randall Gay was there on the coverage. Here's JB for another game break. Love the intellectual gymnastics with Kurt and Tim. Hey, love this catch as well, fellas. DeLong, look at this great catch by Musa Muhammad. League leading 15th touchdown catch. Panthers need a win and some help to get in. They've narrowed the gap 14 10 to the Saints back to Kurt and Tim. Well, there's a guy they talked about it in the pregame oh. show. Underrated. Oh, Moosin? Yes. Yeah, I mean, Terry said he thought uh, Terrell Moosin had the best season, but T.O. had the most impact. I think Moosin has even had a bigger impact than Terrell Owens. I mean, 49ers Hanners. going forward on fourth down. Penalty marker down. They get it out to Eric Johnson. Now, he got enough yardage for the first down, but let's see what the penalty is. Offside, 48, defense, lined up in the neutral zone. Penalties declined, result of the play, first down. So Eric Johnson's first catch of the day is good enough to keep the drive going. Oh, you're talking about Musin Muhammad and the 49ers, I mean the uh, Carolina Panthers and yeah. the help that they need. And I tell you what, they are right now, AFC, Buffalo, yeah. NFC, Buffalo Carolina, hot. the teams you don't yeah, want to play. Are, they are hot, I mean, but they've got to win today and they need either the Vikings or the Rams to lose or they need the Seahawks to win so they must win 
and then they need a couple of other things to happen. And but last time we checked, it looked like the Vikings were down, so that would that would satisfy one of the criteria for them. There's Kevin Barlow back in the game. Yeah, Minnesota still down. There's the Fox. How about that on the Fox box? Josh Weingrad coming through, just popping that thing down there, right? Well, we, we're getting plugs for everybody today, aren't we? Well, you got to you know, take care should. of the New England guys, you know? Oh, yeah, you know. You got P.T. Navarro, our producer, who lives right around the corner here. You got you to take, yeah, you take care of the home guys. Kevin Barlow. Brought down by Vince Wolford. Nice tackle by the big defensive tackle. And if you want your name mentioned on the air, just pledge three dollars to. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it's we like got, a PBS pledge drive here. You got the booth runner, Ken Freeze. Yeah. Right there, you go. We've got lots of people in the stand tour from New England too. <laughs> uh, well, hey man, it's you know, it's getting late. 21-7. Balls at the nine yard line, third down. 49ers trying to score and get this back to within a touchdown. And on a day, really, where they've had opportunities, they got the turnovers, but they've only turned them into points once. And they're trying to straighten out the play clock. They've got that taken care of and reset, so plenty of time for San Francisco. Barlow met by Teddy Bruschi right at the line of scrimmage. What a day for Bruschi. Boy, Bruschi, and I'll tell you, Wilfrick in front of him lets Teddy Bruschi just come and fill. Thirteen tackles on the day for Bruski. Another fourth down situation for the Niners. They need the seven. Oh, oh, he's styled up. Short of the first, looks like. Yep. And that's a nice thing for a defense. The big Vince Wolfrick up there. Showing the officials how to me <laughs> measure it. Well, they needed to get the ball to the seven yard line. Wolford still giving advice, but that's what happens. You're father of two. You know how to dole out the advice, that's quote unquote. Right. You know, fatherly I, advice works. I like to see that kind of effort on defense. And, you know, I like to hear it even more, right? How about you? Nothing wrong with that. Nice. About eight and a half minutes left in the regular season. Rowan Davey in a quarterback for the New England Patriots who are up 21-7 on San Francisco. New England came out, turned the ball over three times in the first half. Went down seven, nothing, but have scored 21 straight since then. There's that Pittsburgh Buffalo game. Buffalo with a one point lead going into the fourth quarter. Davey showing off the big arm, going for Bethel Johnson, oh. right through his hands. Well thrown by Rowan Davey, huh? Couldn't oh, have thrown the, that any better. The arm is not the question with Davey. Boy, Bethel Johnson let one slip out. Man. I mean, that's tough. I mean, I couldn't catch it like that, but... That's Those why you weren't a wide receiver. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Those are the ones you need to catch, though. He, Rowan Davey dropped that sucker right in there. And you, you, know, you, you talked for the last couple of days about how he likes to have that a lot of ball uh, air under the ball. He has a very high trajectory for his passes. He's alert, alert, alert. Calls a timeout. Tried to change the play at the line of scrimmage. Couldn't get it all going. Looked up, saw the play clock was coming 
to a close and decided to call the timeout instead of taking the penalty. Well, after the timeout, the Boston faithful coming down to Foxborough to cheer on the Patriots as they have done with a lot of success of late and right now. The Patriots looking for their 14th win of the season. Rowan Davey hands it off. Cedric Cobbs. And Cobbs, another rookie in the ball game. He's in to replace Corey Dillon. Picks up the first down on a 13-yard run. Well, when you've had two out of the last three Super Bowls, there's a lot of there's a lot of faithful fans, right? Right. Now, the, I think the biggest impediment to their uh, making it three out of four is going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers, don't you? Well, they've got home field advantage throughout the playoffs right now. 14-1 and one coming into today's game with Buffalo. And you can see right now their defense has been the yeah. reason. Everybody talks about Roethlisberger. That's right. And the rookie record that he's put up. But they can run the football and they can play defense. And I, and, and I think that defense really is, is even more important to Pittsburgh than anything they do on offense. We've got an injury on the field right now. Jimmy Williams, the cornerback for the San Francisco 49ers, is still down. So that will stop the clock. And in the meantime, give us a chance to talk about Really, you take a look at the AFC picture. You've got San Francisco, or pardon me, you've got the Pittsburgh Steelers number one and this New England team as the number two seed. And really, the reason they will be the number two seed locked in there is because of the loss to Pittsburgh. And when they played Pittsburgh, of course, you know, Kurt, we talked today about the turnover factor for the Patriots, and they played in Pittsburgh. Of course, Roethlisberger, Making a nice throw right there. Got the bus going hard. And then the Patriots had four turnovers in that game. And also, Corey Dillon was not in that game. So while I think the Pittsburgh Steelers are certainly formidable, I think with Corey Dillon in that game and with the Patriots, if they can go down there and not turn the ball over, I think that's a game where they might even be favored going into Pittsburgh. What do you think? I think that people kind of look at it, and most people still believe, despite the win streak by Pittsburgh, that New England is the most complete team in the National Football League. The question really is how healthy will they be? And that's been the issue for them, especially in the secondary. Coming down the stretch here is just trying to keep bodies healthy enough to put them out there. The end around to Bethel Johnson. And Johnson gets enough for another Patriot first. Well, that's one reason why you see so many new faces, if you will, for the Patriots, whether it's a Cedric Cobbs or a Rowan Davey, just to get those guys some experience, because in the past, at least, it's, it's come in handy for well, New England. That's right, and as we said, Bill Belichick never misses an opportunity to make his team better whether it's by getting guys experience in, in a game like this or repetitions in practice. And he takes pride in having a role for each and every player each and every week to keep everyone involved. Cobbs. Cedric Cobbs still alive. We'll pick up two yards on the play. Well, the other team I think you have to talk about when you talk about the AFC is certainly the Indianapolis Colts, Peyton Manning with his record setting 49 touchdown passes, broke Dan Marino's record last week. Three wide receivers with 1,000 plus yards. How about that? Oh, 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns. So not just racking up yards, but racking up points. And their defense is really kind of a big play defense. Statistically, yeah. they don't look good. No, they don't, Kurt. And I, and I think, you know, they're, they're the antithesis of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Steelers relying heavily on their defense. And the Colts really uh, defensively struggle. Patriots, of course, played the Indianapolis Colts in first, week one. First game of the season, yep. that Thursday night contest. And, you know, really, Indianapolis ran the ball all over the Patriots in that ball game and there were questions whether or not the Patriots would be able to bounce back but 
Indianapolis had three key turnovers by Edger and James, and New England wound up winning that game. And they've gone on from there, as that one was intended for Kevin Casper incomplete. And of course, the Patriots on the verge of their 14th win, which would make them 14 and two for the second straight year. I think the thing that would make me nervous about the Indianapolis Colts, if I'm the Patriots, is their ability to score, and especially their passing game against, as you said, a Patriots secondary that is significantly depleted. The handoff taken by Robbie Abdullah. Brian Young makes the tackle. I think a team a lot of people forget about in the AFC because they were worse. As you look worse to first, last season they were 4-12. and 12. This season, 11-4, and four, the San Diego Chargers. And they've got a good defense, and they've got a good running game. They found a way to mix it up. Drew Brees, probably the comeback player of the year in the National Football League. Everyone knows what LaDainian Tomlinson can do. Here's Rowan Davey directing traffic, trying to get a block. Couldn't quite get it in time and is forced out of bounds. And that's one thing as you see Rowan Davey coming up short here on this third down. That's one thing is, is, as I watch the Patriots on, on film, on tape, that Brady almost always does. He, you never see Tom Brady throw short on a third down. If it's third and eight, he's throwing that thing eight plus. You know what I'm saying? He just doesn't throw those underneath passes. He doesn't scramble on third and eight, you know, unless there's a clear shot. I think that's why they, they are so successful continuing to move the ball with those starters in there. Josh Miller's punt. Bouncing inside the five, good placement. And they hustled down there to down it. Well, Gerard Cherry was the guy who saved one at the one-foot line earlier. This time, he does it again deep in San Francisco well, territory. That, that's a, those are two nice kicks with backspin on them by Josh Miller, right? This is the second time we've seen him put a, a kick right there at the end line and then have it bounce back into the field of play, at least long enough for the special teams guys to get down kind of like the concentration there by Gerard Cherry right the way he just kind of makes sure he doesn't get into the end zone before he taps that ball and we mentioned cut by the Patriots earlier re-signed this week for special team purposes like that underneath the Steve Bush out to the 10-yard line let's get it out to Los Angeles for Jets Rams update from JB. Third what a game in St. Louis. Rams were up 21-20. Take a look. Mark Bulger's pass deflected by Sean Ellis. Picked off by Jonathan Vilma having an outstanding year. He takes it to pay dirt. Two-point conversion is no good, but the Jets take the lead. 26-21. The Jets win, and they are in back to Kurt and Tim. All right, JP, and the Jets win. They get in the playoffs. And just to clarify, since I made a boo-boo earlier. But the Rams do not control their own destiny. They have to win and get right. a little bit of help. Right. They must win, whereas the Jets, they win, they're in. Now, if the Jets don't win, they could still go in, but they would need either the Bills or the Broncos to lose or tie today. But Jets win, and they're in. Of course, the longtime nemesis of the New England Patriots. And it, it would, wouldn't be uh, that uncommon to see three out of the four teams in the AFC East in the playoffs, right? I mean, you've Bills and possibly in there this season. The Dolphins always tough. Exactly. I mean, this is a tough division when you take a look around it, especially from a defensive standpoint. I mean, look at the defense with the Jets, New England, even Miami and Buffalo. Those are four of the tougher defenses in all the National Football League. I, you know, we talked about the Colts earlier and how their defense ranked 28th in the league and their offense is so productive, but I I, I can't remember the last time a, a team won a championship that didn't have a, a very sound defense, at least sound. You know what I'm saying? To 
the extreme where the Baltimore Ravens won it with not much offense, but they just had such a dominant defense. Maurice Hicks running into the dominant defense yeah. of the New England Patriots. You talk about the AFC East. Looking up the rankings of the defenses in this comp in this division, the Patriots are the lowest ranked I defense so. in the Ninth, AFC East right? at nine. Nine, yeah. All four teams are in the top nine, which shows you you better be ready to play when you play any of the teams in the AFC East. And as you said, three of them could wind up making the playoffs mostly because of the defensive play. Uh, and I, mostly. I, yeah, but I think for the Patriots, you know, you, you talk about when you think about the Patriots, even their their last two championships, it, it's always been about balance. I mean, mm -hmm. they've played well on offense, they've played well on defense, they've played well on special teams, and, th and they need that balance. And they had that balance in, in last week's game against the Jets. Romeo Cornell, of course, the defensive coordinator. We'll probably get a look uh, from several teams again this year as a head coaching prospect who was actually fairly close to the Giant job last year. Yeah, you know, and he is a guy, Kurt, who is adored by players. Really, and that that is that's not the case with every coordinator in this league by far. But he, is a guy. Hicks. he lost the football on fourth down, had picked up the first, and coughed it up. New England recovers. And so Cornell's defense yeah. coming up with their second turnover of the second half. The old marching band player that <laughs> that <laughs> Bruce had broken out of there. I'll tell you, Teddy Bruschi has had a heck of a game. Earthwind Moreland recovered that one. Maurice Hicks, though, with his second fumble. Meanwhile, Bruschi just continues to plug away 15 tackles on the afternoon for Bruschi. Well, Kurt, if I'm going to give credit to other people, i got to give credit to the whole crew. Kevin McRoby, Jamie McCombs, Jimmy Platt, Jeff Morello, Gene Matthews, Maddie, Steve Baldwin, the secret weapon, Keith Dornellis. Keeps us looking good. Vic Daschle, Wyatt Anderson, Jeff Lynn, Kimball Bergman right here next to us all season along with Jeff Nelson, Lisa Arden, Josh Weingrad. He gets two mentions today, I guess. And featuring Eric Norton on the stats computer. And, who, you know, Norty with Norty's notes all, all year. I think that's something he should almost, you know, franchise those. And as usual, we have to make sure that we let everybody know that today's game is produced by P.T. Navarro, directed by Rich Dewey. The associate director, Fran Morrison, our broadcast associate, Michael Snag. The technical producer, Kevin McRoby. Three game produced by Scott Ackerson and directed by Bob Levy. The senior producer is Bill Brown. And the executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. I want to give special mention to Frank Navarro. PT's dad and a well-known football coach. Just for having PT. That's, that's right. That's what we want to make sure. Thank you, Mr. Navarro. Two-minute warning. Today's game is being seen around the world on Armed Forces Television. We want to send our best wishes to the men and women of Headquarters Company 2nd Inf Infantry Division, the Warlocks, Camp Red Cloud in Weijongbu, Korea. We appreciate all you do for America. We certainly do. We thank you on behalf of our families as well. And then, oh, revolutionary soldiers. Of course, it started all, all here, didn't it? Bunker Hill. Right around the corner. Paul Revere. <laughs> Cedric Cobbs. Caught by Derek Smith on third down. He will not pick up the first. Patriots going for it on fourth down. Davy. Rolling. Looking for a receiver. Oh, Robbie Abdullah had a chance to catch it, but as soon as he touched the football, it was knocked out by Tony Parrish. Nice hit. Still playing to the end. So Parrish prevents the touchdown, gives the 49ers the ball with 112 left. And they're down by 14 points here. They do have two timeouts. On 
first down, Dorsey. Throws it out, and Rashawn Woods makes his first catch of the game. Just the ninth catch he's made all season long for their first round pick in this year's draft. Of course, San Francisco owns the number one pick overall in next year's draft. Barring a comeback today, they'll finish at 2-14. and 14. And when you finish at 2-14, and 14, there's so many things that you probably need in the draft. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to trade down so they could get more first-round picks. I know they like Tim Rattay as a quarterback. He struggled with injury, but when he's been in and played, he's made good decisions. He's an accurate quarterback. Smart guy. Dorsey being bumped around as he threw that football is incomplete. He's done a nice job today, too, Kent Dorsey. Not enough to win, but he's made good decisions. There's a flag down right about the 28-yard line as the officials are now discussing something. Did that ball make it back to the line of scrimmage? Intentional grounding, number seven, offense, 10-yard penalty, loss of down. Yeah, that's Inside what it was. Inside the last it... one minute, intentional grounding is also a 10-second runoff. Please reset the clock to 15 seconds. Because he didn't get that pass back to the line of scrimmage, just threw it in the ground, it's intentional grounding. Well, you can throw it in the ground if it's right. a screen pass, or if you're trying to set up a screen pass. And then if you're outside the pocket, you got to get it to the line of scrimmage, at or near the line of scrimmage. New England, 30-second timeout. So the Patriots will use the timeout and will be ready to put the wraps on their season. They finish at 14 and two for the second year in a row. That's ties the mark for best record after winning a Super Bowl, and they head back in the postseason without home field advantage throughout the playoffs this time around, but they do have a bye as the winners of the AFC East will have next weekend off, watch the wild card weekend, and then the highest seeded team to survive out of wild card weekend will come here and play on either the 15th or 16th of January. And of course, the team that does have the home field advantage in the NFC is the Philadelphia Eagles. They rested their starters on Monday night against the Rams. And Lost that game. Terrell Owens, will he come back? Here's Dorsey connecting with Woods. And Rashawn Woods. Oh, showing some of the promise that they expected out of him this season, his second catch on this drive. 59 yards on the catch and run. And uncharacteristically, you see a missed tackle by the Patriots by this back there in the secondary and that let Woods continue to run but with six seconds left they'll probably 49ers take a shot here at the end zone maybe have a chance for two shots at the end zone balls on the 15 looking for one of those shots Dorsey for the end zone and he overthrew Derek Hamilton, and the clock will run out on the game and on the season. And so the Patriots get the win 21-7. They finish up at 14-2, heading into the playoffs. Well, for Tim Green, this is Kurt Menefee saying so long from New England. 21-7 is our final. And the Patriots, after a slow start to this ball game, Three turnovers in the first half, straighten out in the second half, and win it by 14.